let's go through this. This is talking about collaboration in the digital ed part there. They were talking about all the digital ed tools. One of the things is obviously the tools are often inside your actual LMS. This was a collaborative project ultimately funded by four different organizations so far. Um, and it's, it's all about using post-it notes. And obviously there's lots of tools out there that does that. So let's go through this. So the challenge was to create a tool within Moodle that allowed the level of collaboration of post-it notes on a wall. So um, there's things like Padlet and Trello and other ones out there that do this, but they wanted something that was more inside of Moodle and why? And Moodle is not your, it's your platform too, Emer. that's great. Okay. So it wanted to be within Moodle and so that the data is stored as part of the course content, not on an external system, because when you have students doing work, you'd like to keep all of their work within the system so it's backed up and rather than having to maintain it on external platforms, which may or may not be as easy for them to get copies of what they've contributed. One of the students to be able to collaborate in creating content, a bit like a brainstorm, um, teachers to be able to ex export submissions, Students to add that sort of sticky note like content and what can you do on a, a, a post-it note on a wall? Well, you can't really add images or embed videos on that, but obviously in the digital world, you can do that. But it was really to try and transfer that kind of collaboration into the online environment. Now the funding originally came from DCU, Athlone Institute of Technology, now TUS, Technology University on the Shannon and the UCL in London all have contributed to this, as has Brickfield. And the idea is that as more features, there's a roadmap of features which Mark Glynn from DCU sort of, um, I won't say controls, but sort of uh, looks after. And as more funding comes in, those different features are then added to it as, as we go. So this is sort of going back through that you see moodle already has authentication so you don't need to sort out the login and it already has the permissions of whether people can post to it or not within a course that's great but it's also got groups and so it has those groups built into moodle and often people will have their assignments or forums set up in separate groups so then you can use that and leverage all of that data that's already there to make the tool work in the same way and that was one of the key requirements behind it to allow it to be dynamic based on groups. But one of the other aspects is data protection. And it's one of the things I forgot to mention um, with regard to all those tools. Um, so I only added the question at the end. You know, you have to assess all these for data protection and for things like accessibility. So having it in a walled garden inside your existing Moodle means that you know that the data is safe in that respect. So when the teachers are setting this up, they choose a closing date for submissions if they want to. They can choose how they want to order the posts. They can then choose if they can be starred, like liked. They can move them around and they can download reports. Now, one of the fundamental things is it does not show the student names. Now, a few people ask why. But if you generally do post it on a wall, you don't necessarily put your name on them there. And it gives that level of, I won't say anonymous, but pseudo anonymous access. So the students don't necessarily see who's putting what. Now, there may be pedagogical reasons to have names on these kind of activities sometimes, but built into this, there's no students. They can't, students can't see who posted. Teachers can, because obviously you need to be able to see that for submissions, but students can't. And that's a really fundamental thing. And as you can see here, the board is set up. It's got like multiple columns. Each column has its own name and then they can add in different types of um, content into it. This is an example of a board set up as a photo gallery. Um, well, actually, Mark just mentions there, as also by being inside Moodle, you have full control over the data, okay? Which is great, no data protection impact assessment, because everybody loves doing those, don't you? So here's a photo board, three columns with nature, animals, and cars. And initially, it just had that you could put a link to a photo and it would embed it. Now you can upload a photo into Moodle as well. Um, and we're just about adding, you can add an SVG as, um, in addition to the normal PNG and JPEG. Um, here's an example of a video board where, again, it's sort of separated out. You've got music videos, educational and sports, 
and students have just added in the content underneath that. And of course, um, you've got some great music there over on the video, Earth, Wind and Fire, Queen and uh, Wild Child. So this is something which it makes it really easy for students to share stuff together. And then, yes, they could do this in a forum, but a forum isn't as, as visual or as structured as this, rather than being visual necessarily. Um, and on top of that, this is an example of a link board. So if they are finding good resources for elsewhere, then you can have this a bit like an internal Moodle version of Delicious, if anyone remembers Delicious, or any of those link sort of curation tools. And this allows the students to curate those together and also the teacher to take, take part in it. Um, and the fact that the student name isn't shown, if the teacher needs to sort of seed that garden so it grows a little bit from the content, the teacher can add items in, which other students may, may just think that they're part of the activity. So the key things are the students can do a certain amount of things, and that's it, it keeps it simple. They can, add, they can put a heading in, they can add some body text. It's not HTML, it's just straight text. They can add links to a website with the name of the website. They can upload an image with a title, which is used for the alt text, and they can embed a YouTube video. It wanted to be keep it very simple, so they didn't really need to think about the form their content would take. This wasn't, this was usually these kind of activities will be single, single purpose, although they can be multi-purpose, but they can also edit or delete their own post. Now they can also star, and this is a kind of very simplified form that we have gone with, where they have their title, they choose their media down here, what type, and then it just lets them paste it in. So again, I was trying to keep it as simple as possible for the students so that they could actually just contribute to it and just focus on that. Here's another example of a board, and there's also an option for a teacher to put a background color or a background graphic as there is here. And this is like, using it as a project tool. So if you break it into groups and you've got a project going on, they could have each board as being like the tasks for each of their project sprints or their, um, that they have to do while they're creating their group project. So it becomes an internal tool for them rather than forcing them to go off and register a free account on somewhere like Trello. And again, losing the teacher, the easy visibility of all of that mechanics of how they are working together obviously how they're working together is often graded as a key part of that. And these are just two examples of CSVs for the board export. One of them is it exports the columns out and each of the rows then is a separate, a separate cell. Or you might have a submission where it's listing all of the submissions and who submitted and when. And that way you can get to see the actual participation in that respect. You can, a teacher can drag and drop their cards between columns and also students can drag their own ones. So, um, and usage. So it's only been a collaborative project released in the summer. However, steadily increasing the number of usage um, on sites around the world. So about 750, and these are of the sites that share that data back with Moodle.org, not all do. Um, the, you can see here that there's people already testing it out on Moodle 4.0, which comes out in March, but there's a lot of people using it on 3.11, which was the latest version. Um, and then we can see the download by month. Obviously in December, people weren't maybe downloading as many as before, but it's, it's going well. And in the different type of activities, which are things that students do inside a course, it's about 15th on um, the downloads for the last three month period. And that's great, especially when like six of those are virtual classrooms, which in this, the age of the pandemic um, would be way up there anyhow. So it's not bad, take them out, it's in the top 10 of activities. So that is that, I'm gonna just stop sharing and have anyone got any questions, anyone got any thoughts about how they use this or do they use these kind of posted tools in their courses? So good question there by Cathy. So technically you can create a group of one and this has always been a secret bit of Moodle magic that most teachers don't realize. 
you can literally curate a group of just the student and then the teacher can look into all of them. You could do it with forums or any other tools and you can do it with this. But we are going to create a setting for individual board so that each student will have their own individual board as well. That's one of the roadmap things when Mark finds more funding or one of the other institutions throw, throw a few um, dollars or euros in its direction. But that's why it's leveraging groups, because if you were to go to Padlet and wanted to set up 30 groups of 20 students each to parallel what you're doing, that's a lot of setup. We're in Moodle, it's just there, it has that data available. 